That's what it is. You know, practice. So we're gonna talk about how yeah. Tuesdays tune in Iron Perspective Radio. Nurse Barbie will hopefully, definitely you will yes. be a guest on their mm -hmm. show. Crazy. I'm feeling a whole I am perspective outlook and especially perspective is a two power. I wanna learn more about that. Um seems like they've been doing a lot of initiatives for the community. So you said how many events in two years? Fifty events in two years. That's so in three yes. years. <laughs> they doing so much they, their timeline is, is seeming choppy to them, but either way it's so big, so dope, and I'm glad we could be a good influence on the community. Check out IamPerspective.com. I'm good. You're, <laughs> You're welcome, 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 welcome back to a very special episode 20 of I Am Perspective Radio. I am your co-host, Joel H. Whitfield. And I am Nasi Alam. And we are here at I Am Perspective Radio at WebsRadio.com. We have a very yeah, special yeah. guest with us here today. Um, we're going to let you... You want to introduce her? Should she I introduce want to herself? introduce you. Okay. I just want to say <laughs> that you're amazing. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Even, Thank you. Know, I got to, we got to meet you on a uh, on a personal level, and I'm excited for what we're about to talk about. We have a very special mm -hmm. guest. Mm -hmm. uh, we do want you to introduce yourself, but I am going to introduce you, introduce yourself. Everyone, welcome Nurse Barbie. <laughs> Hi, you guys. This is Nurse Barbie. So happy to be talking with y'all again great energy dope vibes and can't wait for you guys to ask me all the questions you need to yes. yeah well, first first things first uh congratulations mm -hmm. with thank you thank you and all your success you know mm -hmm. you keep everything 100 on this show there's no fluff and uh, everybody who's going to see mm -hmm. this knows who we are mm -hmm. and um before we even get into it i just want to reiterate the authenticity of meeting you at first and not even right. that you were on that journey. Talk about it. Yeah, you know, because people will see something that you're doing and it looks like uh, you, you kind of prepped to be that. Right. When we met you, we met you out in the field going to work. Not yes. Even, you know, so mm -hmm. to, to have this moment full circle, we're really uh, excited to have you on the show. Yeah. And I, I want you to talk about that too. How, you know, I know y'all going to get all the questions and everything, but uh later on now it doesn't matter a lot of people like to ask oh did you did you cry on cue or do you really talk like that and it's just like come on this is real life and i'm just so happy to really do the interview with people i've met before. been doing so many interviews um but this one is special because this is the first one where i'm talking to people like you said no fluff the real stuff true life true yeah. life yes true, true, true life, life. Yeah, and yeah, you guys, you guys have seen me and just saw a little taste of the person I am. Yeah, that's exactly, um, so just to give you a little bit, I know we spoke a little bit when we did mm -hmm. meet about what it is that we do, but um, at I Am Perspective, one of our biggest things, we actually do live events for the community. Okay. Um, and we host dialogues for people to have an honest, open space to have these conversations that we need to be having. So we've been hosting them. Um, weekly, monthly, at this point, at this point it's weekly. Um, and it's open to the community. And so um, we do have some, you know, things that we hold ourselves to, which is that everyone's open, that we believe that everyone has a perspective and something important to share. You definitely have mm -hmm. your perspective. Um, mm -hmm. But also through our work, um, we've created something called the unconscious bias awareness self-assessment, right? So I do want to kind of bring this up even as we're speaking with you because yes. on what you mentioned, I think that's, we have a lot to talk about. Oh, exciting. Yeah, yeah. So let's just jump let's in jump with right. that, with what she mentioned. Yeah. Um, to throw it out there for you, what are some biases that people have had about, that you think about yourself, you know, that people have had about you? That's not so true. some biases that people have about me, um, that I am mean, um, that I am an angry black woman. Mm -hmm. You know, that stereotype. Um, that I don't care about others' feelings. When in reality, I care more about the morals and integrity and safety of my patients. So, you know, sometimes in my field, people are, they get butt hurt. You know, they take things personally. 
when we're all here for a common goal. I think the show shows that. I think those would be the two probably heaviest biases, you know, that I mean, and I can be like the angry black woman, you know, or I'm not educated or, you know, like people might talk to you a little bit sadly because of the color of my skin. You know, even if I saw a quote today, even if you're let into the doors of a white surrounding, it doesn't mean that you'll be, uh, you'll be welcomed. Yeah. So sometimes I see those, you know, kind of things go on in the healthcare industry. It could be, it could be a mean girl's town sometimes as well. Mm-hmm. Female dominated. I, I, I understand a lot about that actually. Mm-hmm. Um, so before I know we didn't actually formally introduce you yet exactly mm-hmm. what you do, right? So, um, right. um, you are a nurse, right? Yeah. But certified. 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 Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. <laughs> but we mm-hmm. actually met you because you were volunteering as an EMS. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so um, we met you about a month ago, uh, Jarrell and I. We have an initiative besides just doing dialogue events for the community. We were looking to give back on, in our own way. Yeah. Um, and how we could, not with just essential workers, but those who are also underprivileged. And so we did have an opportunity to come by and bring some essential packets to you and your coworkers. Yes. And Still have my mask. Mm-hmm. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. Very um, appreciative. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we had a very different experience. You were very loving and joyful and supportive. And we were, like, clear that we wanted to have you back. And we wanted to speak with you further than just that one meeting, which was a okay. weird little social distance meeting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But what what got you from yeah. nursing to volunteering? Because when we met you, it was like everybody wanted to be inside, you know. So like, right. what, what even in that energy had you out there like that? Oh, the thrill of see, ER workers really consider them um, being on the front line. But when you really get down to the nitty gritty, EMS is, you know, what I've been saying, the front line of the front line. You know, they're in the field. Like I'm in the field, but they're in the field in the field you know so to get that opportunity i'm like you know i gotta do more i work a lot of hours um but just going out and going actually into the homes of people you see what they're going through you're able to talk to them more get a little background and so especially you know in the thick of covid my parents were affected when you give back it just everything just comes full circle and honestly i went on a run where uh, when I say a run, you know, for the viewers that are listening or tuning in, um, we just mean basically when 911 or uh, Fire Department of New York calls and we get called and then we go on a run, you know, EMS goes on a run. Mm -hmm. And um, a lady passed and her family, you know, they were, we were working on her, trying to save her life, trying to save her life, trying to save her life. And even when it looked bleak, one of the family members, she's like, okay, we're trying, we're trying. And then when we had to call the time of death, you know, she stepped outside and I had to follow her because I knew she was trying to be so strong. I just gave her a hug. And when I say she let it out, that's the joy. It's, it's such a sad moment, but that's the joy of volunteering um, with EMS. Because sometimes, you know, people don't realize and they don't show the side of, um, you're, you don't always make it to the hospital. They don't always make it to me. I'm the ER. I, they, I receive these people. You know what I mean? And they don't always make it to me. And so to be there to comfort them, because that is a part of nursing. Mm-hmm. That is a part of being a medical professional. Um, people don't realize that. And I'm sure you guys know how important your mental state is, you know, um, and taking care of that as well as the the body. It's not just a physical thing. And so... That's why I got into volunteering, to be honest. And the show was just a, a cherry on the top. It was just able to show others what we do um, and how we're affected physically in our own personal lives. Yeah, yeah on that point, um, I'm listening to you, and I, lo- I love hearing this because in, we're New Yorkers, and you know how, right. how people feel about New Yorkers, that we walk around and we don't care. Like, there's nobody right. in the city. Right. And, um, we 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 knew we were in the heart of something special when we were out there and you know mm-hmm. I felt that as well volunteering and uh it's a, it's a level of empathy which is the word mm-hmm. that we really base a lot of our conversations on and 
even when we talk, you know, we, we started this and we were like, man, we wanted to talk about race relations and everything. And here we are three years later and we're having this kind of dialogue about yes. on that level. So mm -hmm. this continues to evolve for us to show why, why it's important. And I uh, really appreciate you, you know, showing that side, you know, mm -hmm. we know that you're about to, you, you got stardust all over you, you're about to be a, a mega star, but uh, it's beautiful to know that you'll be, you'll be moving forward, you know, with that care and that is still about people. Um, I, I do have a, this, a question from that, right? You know, say your roads do start to take off right now. Uh, do you think EMS work is something that you would put down and then pursue well, listen, I just, I've been a star, all right? The, the people, just, <laughs> all right, let me get it right, the people are, are just getting to, to see it, you know? But um, right. given an avenue, so grateful to MTV and, and Hot Stakes Production, I've been given an avenue for people to see me shine. Um, EMS work is something I actually enjoy, but we're gonna, you know, I gotta give a little, um, you know, I can't tell y'all everything, but you guys definitely see me in the field. It is something I enjoy. And um, I'm not the type to just pick things up and put it down. I'm very serious about my work. I'm mm -hmm. serious about being a nurse. I took volunteering very seriously. And whether I continue to do it, I will definitely continue to take it seriously. Be put my all into, you know, put my all into it. Yeah. Uh, and I just want to say, you guys do your homework. Because when you showed up there, that was the first time. I really, I really want to give you guys a shout out. That was the first time someone came and blessed us with food. We, we were there volunteering and we didn't get to eat. And this is on the regular. On the regular, EMS struggles to eat um, because you're having calls all day. And then like, sometimes they eat and drive or you know, they, trying to, they might not eat at all. So when you guys came and brought the care package, the mask and hand sanitizer where people couldn't even find hand sanitizer, it was such a blessing. I'm like, how did they even get out here? How do they even know? <laughs> how do they how do they know about this project? How do they know we're out here? That is um definitely a sign of a team, um, a company that does their research and it's definitely for the community. I just hope you guys, I don't know if you guys do work in Brooklyn, because you know I, I gotta give up, give a give <laughs> a big up to Brooklyn. That's that's me or Leah, but you guys did your homework. Well, we are Queens kids. We're Queens kids. Okay, yes, yes. Shout out to Queens. Brooklyn, you know, Brooklyn, Queens Day, yeah. we right there. We, yes. Y'all you, know, yes. you know, what we hear, um, really, what does it look like to be a volunteer, right? So for us, um, the work that we started doing, we are a business. However, mm -hmm. we started really with the intention of just giving back to the community. So when we started right. years ago, we didn't have a business model in in play right. or anything like that we just wanted to do good for the community and i think a lot of people um don't realize that as volunteers that's a lot of energy and work that we're putting out ourselves and what does that really look like to you know when we showed up like I, that was really our goal is to show you guys the appreciation that we know that mm -hmm. you deserve right because you're putting in like you don't have to do that you're not getting paid mm -hmm. to do that right mm -hmm. i don't know if people realize that EMS drivers are even volunteers. I don't think I realized that until we decided to come like, oh, you guys are volunteering? Like this is not, right. you're not getting paid. It's not something you do right. like five or whatever hours, right? But, um, and so that was our way of really showing you guys appreciation. We're glad that we were able to do that, that we were able to meet you. Um, if it was Thank a regular you. time, we would have been, you know, able to sit with you, <laughs> but- um, Chat, yeah, right. yeah. all of that. Um, so what does it look like to be a volunteer? How does one become an EMS worker? What does that, what's that process? So you definitely have to go through a lot of training, a lot of certifications, um, be BLS certified, CPR trained. You have to take classes to know how to save a life, give CPR, which I implore regular people to. You know, it's, it's so crazy how this world is. Um, you can really save a family member's life, a friend's life by taking those courses. But to be in mess, and if you guys want to learn how to, you know, volunteer for Thrive Night, because we're always looking for volunteers, you can go on their website, Thrive Night um, Volunteer Ambulance Corp. And you just go through an application, like any, you know, job. It's, it is something I take into You go through an application, they ask um, thorough questions. Can't just let any and everybody, you know, background checks. 
and then you go through certain certifications. Now, when you do volunteer, you get a lot of support from FDNY and um, other volunteer, um, not volunteer, other EMS companies, which there's a difference between medics and techs. So there's a whole lot of medical um, wordage, but basically volunteering does help um, because once you arrive on scene, sometimes you're the first on scene, you know? Anyone who's interested, I implore them to first look it up and make sure that that is something they would like to do and something that they could be consistent at doing, you know? Even two, three times a month makes a difference, but your heart has to be in it, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And I, I think the show definitely uh, shows, like, you might be a volunteer, but you're in the nitty gritty. You are still in the thick of it. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, we feel that because we've been coming up. A lot of people have been asking us, you know, or not asking it, but hey, we want to start conversations because we've been doing dialogues in New York for years now, and mm -hmm. uh, where we uh, we know that people want to talk, we still like, hey, man, this is the work. Like it, it mm -hmm. takes a lot of it's work. Commitment. To, yeah, to it's hold these spaces. Yeah. And, you know, to volunteer, we think what we're doing is volunteer to an extent. And I, it's glorified to be like, oh, yeah, Nurse Barbie is volunteering. But, like, no, nah, that's that's really putting our work out there. Right, right. So, you know, we want to definitely thank you for that and, mm -hmm. and, and that service. Because it is a service. It is a service. It is. There's no hustle mm -hmm. about it. There's hustling. You could have been out there hustling. But, like, that's a genuine service to, to right. the public. So, yeah. And yeah. that's why I feel so much better. Um you know, doing a show like this because it's it's you doing what you love, right? And then you get the opportunity just to show the world. It's not acting. It's mm -hmm. not, oh, I, I'm trying to do something. Like you said, you're putting in work, you're hustling, and then um, now everyone is able, now you guys are able to see the project we worked on. We yeah. finished. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So tell, tell us more about the show. Um, how did that come to fruition? How did they reach out to you or? Glad you asked. So um, doing what I do best caught the eye of um, a production company and MTV picked up the thought or idea and COVID-19 just catapulted everything because it was like, this is a time that we're living in unprecedented, right? Mm -hmm. We have, I have, I don't know about y'all, I have not lived through a pandemic in my generation. <laughs> no. um, but then it's like, okay, well, we have this idea, but how do we get it done? So just want to let you guys, if you didn't know, it was all self-shot. Body cameras, um, cameras set up in the ambulance, um, you know, us filming or using equipment with our phone. Mm -hmm. So it's really unprecedented. Who would have thought like I could be like a, a part of a camera crew? You know, I basically, my name should be on credits. You know what I mean? Like I definitely um, was grateful for the opportunity. So when they asked me if I wanted to be in this show, I said, why not? I already do this in real life. Yeah. It should be on TV. So let's do this. Yeah. And you're able to give um, viewers a different perspective on what it really looks like. I think yes. what you mentioned earlier that as a nurse, you're in the hospitals, you don't always get to see the patients that everybody that, you know, they're picking up necessarily mm -hmm. is able to um, see it from a different perspective, a different angle of what it looks like to be on the front line, front lines, right? Um, and still being able to utilize everything that you offer, everything that you can serve them with. And I think... Um, you know, what comes up for me in even in doing, like you just said that this is all self-made, right? Just body cameras, your own phones. And I think a great equalizer is where we're in now in COVID-19. There is no, no one, everyone's doing things to their phone. Like even in hosting this conversation, you know, a lot of people have fancy studios, right? We did have a right. radio studio at one point, but like now everyone's on Zoom, everyone's on video. So like, what does it really mean that, we're all actually on the same level. So I really, it's a very unique perspective and unique look on that. Mm -hmm. so, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm, we're, we're all on this. We're all on the same plane. And I think we all get to see what heroes look like, what volunteering looks like, what this actual work, work looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm excited for everything that 
that you have coming. You know, I'm, we at Iron Perspective are glad to to know you. And be like, oh, that's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> As I go, well, what do you feel next? What do you feel like? Not even what do you see coming, but like, what what do you want to do next? You think? So of course, I'm very vocal on my platforms on social media. Um, underscore underscore Nurse Barbie for those not following me. Um, and www.nursebarbie.com. Um, I definitely try to educate the masses. I'm a mentor. I was able to um, participate. Black nurses killing it on Instagram as well had a, um, I wouldn't say like a competition, but that's basically what it was. She implored other nurses to write and do other activities um, to be involved or to be, uh, what was the word? Help me out. Like basically it was like a, a competition. She mm -hmm. had to see what, who was qualified to be a mentee mm -hmm. and who could fit each different mentor. Oh, if, that makes sense. That, if you guys could understand what I'm saying. So it was a group of, of nursing students who wanted to be um, mentees, and then they went through a process. I was able to have um, a very beautiful mentee who I helped to get a job. So just wow. like you guys know, the act of service is definitely humbling. Yes. Um, so I'm a mentor. I give a lot of tips and advice on um, health and education. I uplift other companies, people of color. I want our community to be built up and I want everybody to support um, the entrepreneurship, you know, of just not only the medical field, but beyond. I definitely welcome um, collaborations and I'm just on a platform. I want my voice to be heard in a positive way. And, you know, the viewers can listen, tuning in, check me out on those platforms. This is really just the beginning. Like I said, this, is, this wasn't something I, I looked for. My star is just able to shine. So I know it's only up from here. You might see me on the TV screen later. Who knows? It might be the start of a very beautiful relationship. But either way, I know I'm going to make an impact. Either way, I'm going to make an impact. I'm just reaching more people. You are definitely, definitely making impact. Um, yeah. Even as you mentioned, you are being a, a mentor, right? Yeah. Something that we have had our focus on is what would our work look like in the healthcare hospital system? As mm. you mentioned, it's not the same. Um, there are different things happening based on, you know, patients and their backgrounds, um, workers and their background and what that looks like. So what kind of insight could you give us about what you think needs to happen? for everyone to really be on the same page in the hospital system? Like what kind of impact? If we that? had a team, if hospitals, ER, because it, it really does start first in the ER. I really love this initiative um, you guys have. And I don't know if you do now, so you can tell me, but not only in the ER, because that's where it starts, but also on the hospital floors where people are admitted. If people are more able to see perspective which i didn't realize how you know often you might use this word you know what i mean if people could see the perspectives of other people i really think it could combat a lot of injustices that we all go through i really think it could work on the biases the discrimination people have against each other um because in the in the healthcare world like i said there's a lot of opportunities unfortunately for people to misunderstand each other um, not only nurses and nurses, doctors and nurses, but also with the patients. And our health is something that we see today that is so valuable. We take it for granted. We wake up, we're walking, our legs that we used to walk, our eyes used to see, you know? Like, yeah. we really got to give thanks because a lot of people don't have that. And if you gave perspective, I definitely think maybe we could partner up. This this has to be something that can be, and I'm a travel nurse, so you know, I got the connections in different hospitals. But you guys would have to tell me, going to different hospitals, I guess, bringing the conversation in, you know? Yeah. For, any, for anybody that's interested, yeah. I think you guys would make a difference. I really do. Yeah, but exactly what you said is why we created this. We really, we sat down and was just like, if people just, saw perspectives differently a lot of mm -hmm. things change the the hospitals like you know 
there's such a disconnect. We know even between the nurses, the doctors, the ER, the, you know, there's the patients, the how patients. they get treated even sometimes. Mm -hmm. like how, how do we as citizens treat the, you know, our nurses and doctors until we have to go in there and we wait mm -hmm. on it has our life in their hands and now it's the on it. most important people on in it. the world, you know. Mm -hmm. So how do we get people to recognize that before it's uh, you know, until we get, I don't, I don't want to have, yeah, yeah like, right, not right. too late, but until this, yeah, yeah, it's not we're too at late, that point, now, we're at that point. I think we can't, at that point, not we can't ignore things anymore yeah. with everything that's happening. And so, even in having a conversation like this, being able to have an open conversation, um, a lot of companies right now realize that they have to let their employees speak out, like, they can't just, you know, monitor them or tell them or restrict them from saying things and so we're in a new space right now for people to really be to be honest and authentic mm -hmm. and like what that looks like so yeah and, and the work you're doing again man it's, mm -hmm. it's dope because you're shining and you got empty but it's it's also putting a light on the work of of the thousands of other volunteers who will never be recognized mm -hmm. or ever have the chance to get the camera on them you know or yeah. how real you are so i just i saw the episode we saw the episode yesterday actually and um you know i like it yes, yeah, yeah. you know um i think people don't realize like with everything that you're doing and maybe even how you present yourself you're so you know beautiful and put together and that people don't realize that you have your own life at home that your parents were dealing with covid but that was you know it wasn't just you going home and like going going to sleep that you actually have to deal with your own thing so um, but you're human, right? At the end of the day, everyone's human and everyone has their own share of things that they're dealing with. And that's really, I think, um, at the end of it, like, yes, we're sharing perspective and we're creating empathy, but, you know, realizing that we're all human and what does that look like and interacting with each other. So Yes, we, we, we're connected. We, we're in sync. We're yeah. going to definitely follow up these conversations mm -hmm. after this. Yeah. We're, we're so grateful to have you here and have your time. Uh, we thank you so much for, for joining us and adding to our conversation. We'll be introduced, you know, we get to introduce our audience to you um, mm -hmm. and everything that you're doing. And again, like I just said, man, it's a reminder, uh, even seeing your face up there. And now there's a show, even though we kind of like moving out of the COVID vibe, it's a show that comes up. It's like, oh, look, this is it's a reminder. There's still people out here making it happen, you know, so. Mm -hmm. We give you uh, two big old salutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we really appreciate salutes. we really appreciate you coming on tonight. Um, if there's anything else that you want to share with us, how we can follow you, how we can support you, please tell us and our fans. So one one last thing I want to say for all of those out there protesting for the Black Lives Matters movement, um, definitely still be safe. Still practice uh, hand hygiene. COVID is still out there. A lot of other states. Um, have their numbers have been rising so I just want to say please um, if you're not feeling well don't put others at risk definitely support the movement and the cause just be safe still check your temperatures still if you're not feeling well call your doctor the hospitals I know people are still very afraid but it's getting better so please don't be afraid to go into the hospital if you feel like you're at that point Mm -hmm. um so just on a health tip you know as a nurse i still have to, to stick with these things um watch the show it is so dope i've watched it like i still can't believe like i'm on tv um mtv.com if you have a cable provider a service provider you can sign in it's on demand as well and yeah underscore underscore nurse barbie www.nursebarbie.com I am perspective for the win. Yes, bang, <laughs> so bang, glad bang. To talking to you guys. Yes, yes. that's love, man. We're gonna be we family now, like we said. So we'll be in we'll, touch for sure. Even when right. we, don't, we don't talk to you, know that we'll be rooting for you. And uh, now I was right here, waiting for waiting for this moment right here. Yes. When she said, "Let's go," I said, "Let's do this," you know. Yeah. Yes. That and that was just so for our viewers out there. I literally right. just shout to you last night. You like, right. So. We really appreciate you. Um, no problem. Uh, and, you know, let us know how we can support you in the future as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So no episode 20, um, True Life Presents First Time, First Time First Responders. Thank you. Much love, everyone. Nurse Barbie, thank you much. 
Love, love. To the next guys. Peace out. <laughs> I'm gonna stop the recording. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just <perfect. laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Cool. I am perspective, and we also have some years <laughs> um, We have our own um, subsidiary called I am protected, and so we're out here looking to protect our essential workers and also our underprivileged communities. And so we've been doing that. We have today for you guys. We have some masks. Um, there's also some hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's also actually some handwritten notes in here um, that's been sent around. Hi, how are you doing? Um, and lotion, because I don't like dry hands and I don't know how it's going for anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, so these are the essential practice that we're dropping.